Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at this little device here. This is a serial RS-232 to Ethernet converter. Now, if you're doing some data logging and you have a microcontroller, and say it's connected up to a weather station, and you want to stream that data to a central location, there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could go with LoRa and put it on a radio link, or we could put it on a network. So anybody on the local area network can gain access to the data from the weather station. So the weather station would be connected up to the serial port and then we, we plug our Ethernet port into our switch, into our network and we could stream that data over the network. Now this box has an IP address. The default IP address is 192.168.0.7 slash 24. Now slash 24 means the first 24 bits is the network ID. So this would be the network ID 192.168.0 and the 7 would be the host or node ID and the slash 24 means the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0 so I could power this box up with the wall wart and you can see the lights come up, got power and it's working now I don't have a weather station but what I'm going to do, this is going to simulate my weather station this is a microcontroller with an accelerometer you can see the X and Y axis and it plugs in to the serial port so this is a DTE and this is a DCE and this, thing, this, this board will be powered by the, by the box so when I plug it in you can watch the TX light so there's a TX light you can see it's transmitting and you can see my power light if I unplug it TX goes out I plug it back in TX goes on so right now this, this board I use it for uh, troubleshooting uh, RS-232 ports. It's constantly streaming uh, G, f G levels from the X axis and Y axis and it's putting it onto the network. So I'll plug in my Ethernet cable and this is going to the switch of my network. So now we can gain access to the data that's streaming over the Ethernet port using Telnet. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. I have my serial to Ethernet converter box plugged into my network, into my LAN. So if you're at work, you could plug it into your workstation. So we go up the file, and we go New Connection, and there we, we select TCP IP, and there's host. So it's 192.168.0.7, that's the IP address of my serial to Ethernet converter. And we select Telnet, which will give us a TCP port of 23. So we hit OK, and there's my streaming data. There's my accelerometer. You can see the x-axis and y-axis. And if I move, if I move it around, you can see the values are changing. So I'm streaming the data onto the network. So anybody now on this network can gain access to this uh, streaming data. OK, there are two ways that we could configure the serial to Ethernet converter box. And we do that through the Ethernet port. So we plug a cable into our computer another end into the box and it doesn't have to be a crossover cable, it could be a normal cable and we could run some software, it's called USR-M0 it's a free download online or we could use a web browser, we could use Google Chrome because this box is hosting a website and we could get into the website through uh, using Google Chrome and, con and configure the box so I'm going to run USR-M0 and I'll show you how to configure the serial to Ethernet converter box okay I have my serial to Ethernet converter box plugged into my computer and I'm running some software called USR-M0 and I'm selecting operate via LAN and I'm going to search for a device so it's going to scan my network for the box so I'll press search device and it's found it and the IP address is 192.168.0.7 so I'll click on that and there's all our configuration data now I've already entered it all but this is the important uh, configuration parameters so static IP, IP address 192.168.0.7, the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, the gateway doesn't matter, we're not going to go through the router, we're not going to go uh, into the internet, we won't do that. If we go down to our serial port, the baud rate 152, 115.2k baud, telnet port is 23, parity is none, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and the module work mode is TCP server. That's all we need. We say save config. So now our box is configured. 
OK, this is the screen you will get if you gain access through the web browser. So if you use Google Chrome and you punch in the URL 192.168.0.7 and the username and password is admin, and this is what you'll get. So there's our static IP. You punch in the static IP 192.168.0.7, the mask, and you hit save and you go to serial port. There's a baud rate, 115.2K baud. Data bits 8, parity none, one stop bit, local port 23, work mode TCP server, and hit save. And that's the way you do it using the web browser. Okay, to gain access to the converter box using a web browser, you have to put your computer on the same network. So go to control panel and go to network and sharing and go to change adapter settings and pick your Ethernet port that you have plugged in and go to properties and select Internet Protocol version 4 and there you use, use the following IP address and you punch in 192.168.0 and .8 so that's one above the box so it's going to be on the same network but it's going to have a different host um, ID it's going to be 8 and you punch in the mask and then hit OK so now the computer is on the same same network as the box and you could get in through your web browser now this is a true RS-232 port, so it has plus or minus voltage levels on it, so it's not compatible to a TTL UART interface. Another option is to go RS-485. It has an option here, so if you have that interface on your, on your project, you could go into here. But if you want to go through the RS-232 port, you need an RS-232 to TTL converter for your project. Okay, I have a little microcontroller project. I have a scamp board which is connected up to an ADS1115, it's a 16-bit ADC. So I'm doing some data logging. So the ADC values are coming out of the UART from the microcontroller, so it's TTL UART, and it's going into this interface module, RS-232 to TTL, so there's our DB9 connector. So all I need is a cable between here and my serial to Ethernet box, and I could stream data, I could stream ADC data onto the network. Okay, so that was a very simple getting started tutorial for this little interface box. And to telnet into this box is probably the simplest configuration. So once you get that up and running, you can play around with uh, more advanced configurations for your projects.